Hello, and welcome to the Mobile User Acquisition Show, a podcast to help you unlock tremendous growth for your app. My name is Shaman Rao. I'm the CEO of the boutique growth marketing firm, Rocketship HQ, and host of the podcast, Mobile User Acquisition Show. In each episode, we feature experts in the field of mobile growth and discuss strategies, tips, and pointers from the leading edge of mobile growth marketing. By the end of each episode, you will have gained actionable and tactical insights that will help you make more informed decisions in your own work around growth. The Mobile User Acquisition Show is produced by Meryl Vincent, Content Marketing Manager at Rocketship HQ. A few weeks ago, we spoke about Google's Privacy Sandbox Initiative for Android, which is a set of tools and technologies for privacy-friendly advertising. So much like ATT, but a lot more sophisticated, if you will, and certainly in the distant future, about two years from now. On the last episode, we spoke about the Topics API, which will fundamentally change targeting. And this is one of what Google calls privacy-preserving APIs. Today, we're going to talk about another key component of Google's privacy sandbox, which is SDK Runtime. The SDK Runtime is an ingenious way for Android to combat tracking and data sharing, which have been primarily driven by SDKs operating in ways that they really shouldn't be. To understand SDK Runtime and why it's so powerful, it's perhaps helpful to take a step back and understand what an SDK is. So an SDK is a piece of pre-written software that any app developer can add to the app code. So let's just say I have made a match three game I do not need to write code that lets me show ads in my game. I can put in code that is written by a third party SDK provider. That's an ad network. If I'm a meditation app and I want to track the analytics for my users, I don't need to write code to track the number of users. I can just add the code already written by a third party provider, which could be an analytics company or an MFP. Now, The problem with this is, one of the problems, if you will, is that the SDK code is essentially a part of my app. Yet, I don't have too much control over what the SDK is doing. It's pre-written code. I don't really understand what it's doing. If it is accessing device data to fingerprint users to target them later, I don't really have too much control over that. So how the SDK runtime solves this problem is by separating the SDK code from the app, by ensuring that the SDK code runs in an execution environment that is completely different from what the app lives in. Now, because the SDK is now decoupled from the app, the SDK has its own set of permissions that are granted and monitored by the SDK runtime which could basically forbid the SDK from accessing user or device level data that it doesn't need. And those permissions are, of course, set by Android. So, you know, there's just nothing that the SDK can do to break those rules. What this would also mean is that SDK developers, which could be MMPs, analytics companies, at their companies could simply upload the SDKs to the app stores as applications. SDKs would be actual applications and app developers would basically call the SDK code from the app stores rather than integrating SDK code within the app itself. Now, uh, as a side effect of that, that could also solve a number of technical issues that often happen that can often just lead to apps crashing or misbehaving due to SDKs that just have bugs in them. All of this, of course, is happening under the hood And this is very much a sign that there is an ongoing movement across the ecosystem in the direction of privacy. Even though this is in the far future, very likely in 2024, this is a sign that there are technical solutions like the SDK runtime, which could guard user privacy in ways that are far less ham-handed than Apple's approach with ATT. For more tips, pointers and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition. Subscribe to our YouTube channel right here or check out our blog rocketshiphq.com slash blog.